Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Moonlit and Polished. In today's episode, I'm opening up my boxy charm. <laughs> my boxy charm. Uh, I'm actually really excited about this box. It's so nice to have a, a day where I just get to do myself up. You know what I mean? It's like since I've had so much like sadness going on and it's true a lot of people say it you know if you just take care of yourself you'll feel better and I have to say like I feel really good I went ahead I said since I washed my hair which you know I just didn't do for a couple of days after the funeral so I just had really bad gross hair. <laughs> Actually, if you saw Sunday's video, I had just come out of the shower and my hair was still wet. But you know, like I washed my hair, I did a face mask, and little by little, I'm starting to feel like myself again, which is really great. So I'm excited to get into this box because there's a few things in there that I was waiting for, some that I didn't expect, and I can't wait for you guys to see what they are. Let's get into it. So I'm really excited about the first thing I'm taking out of the box, which is the, let's see this card, the Haru Haru Wonder Monkey Berry Antioxidant Mask Set. These go for $9 each, and there's two in the box. Let's see. It's supposed to... Provides your skin with antioxidant and anti-aging effects. Uh, da, 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 regeneration, anti-inflammation, and targets many skin imperfections. The sheet is made from 100% pure cotton and non-chlorine bleaching process that allows a delicate touch with enhanced adherence to the skin. All right. But I'm excited about this mainly because I haven't, like, pampered myself in weeks. At least it feels like I haven't pampered myself in weeks. So usually a sheet mask does that. Let's see, you're only supposed to wear them for about uh, 10 to 20 minutes. So I will put my hair up and then apply this. Give me a second. Let's crack this thing open. Uh, so it says to apply after cleaning. I went ahead and washed my face already before I did this. So I'm good. Oh, careful. <laughs> it will squirt everywhere. I always feel like there's such a waste of these masks because they have so much serum, I guess, or essence left over. Like, the bag is actually heavy. And, I mean, there's just nothing you can do about it. Here's all this good stuff just sitting in a bag. And it's not like you can put in another cotton mask or anything to just soak it all up. It'd be nice, though. So I guess I'm just going to keep this on for about 20 minutes and I uh, will be back soon to tell you what to think. Ooh. You definitely need a napkin or a towel or something because it's so just juicy all over your hands. Uh, I'm going to wait about 20 minutes and then I'm, meanwhile I'm just going to use my roller over my face to just absorb as much of this as it can and hopefully it's fantastic and I'll be as radiant and new as it says I will be. We'll see. Oh, okay, it's been 20 minutes and now I'm just removing this. Before I do, you can see how much of it my skin has absorbed. Most of it, uh, I'm like, it'll still stick, but the cotton is definitely becoming drier. So what I like about this mask so far is that it seems... Whatever ingredients they put in it, it's easy for your skin to absorb it. Uh, a lot of the times when I remove a mask, it'll be still really damp or still like slide off my skin because it's just like covered and stuff. And I don't know if it's because my skin's not absorbing it properly or maybe there was just too much stuff. I don't know, but my skin felt like it really absorbed the stuff in this. 
Uh, the mask on the back said to just let your skin absorb whatever is left after you take the mask off or pat. So I'm just going to pat. As I said before, I was using my roller while I was wearing the mask. My skin feels really good, feels really, really hydrated, which I'm enjoying a lot because I didn't realize how dry I had just let it get. And now that we're getting into the colder months, it's going to continue to get drier. Let's move on to the next thing. The next thing I'm even more excited about than the mask because when I saw that BoxyCharm was, you know, doing their little spoilers on stuff on Instagram, I saw this particular thing. It was like between this and another thing. And I was like, oh my God, I want that thing. And I got that thing and I'm super excited. It is the, and forgive me if I'm not saying it correctly, the Kypris Antioxidant Dew Quench and Glow Serum. Oh, look at this beautiful little box with the gold detailing. And let me get a thing here to open this. So this actually retails for $90. I thought that was bonkers. Oh. So you guys mostly watch me for my nails, I assume. And I love this blue color. And you know, one of my favorite nail polishes is this blue color. I, it's so beautiful. And I love the detailing on the bottle. It's super cute. Now, um, I was reading it and it says that it has encapsulated antioxidants, nutrient, uh, nurturing, excuse me, amino acids, and an array of soothing botanicals used as a lightweight hydrator or as a layering piece in your skincare wardrobe. I love the fact that BoxyCharm puts these in sometimes things that are just really just kind of out there in pricing because you're always wondering like, is it really worth $90? And I'm excited to see whether or not this is going to be worth it. Uh, it's a daily serum, so. And like it said, you can put it for layering. I've fully absorbed everything from the mask. And putting a serum on now just makes perfect sense. Let's see. Ooh, it's very milky. So it's like a very thin moisturizer. Ooh. Boy, am I going to be full of moisture today. I'll just put a little bit. I'm gonna, I don't know how much of it, like if it a little goes a long way, but I'll start off with just about two drops and then see how far it goes. And it's very slippy. Oh my goodness, they're so... Yeah, that little bit does go a long way because I definitely feel like I have almost too much on my face. I want to get one of those serum infusing tools that warms up and kind of vibrates so you can use it to apply a serum. There's one by Spa Sciences, I think, and it's about $30. It's not all that expensive, but it's definitely something that I always kind of pause before I consider getting it. And I really should just make the jump and just do it. I've seen, I think, Finishing Touch, the people who make those razors, make one now that has, like, rose quartz, and then it, and it warms. If it does warm, I'm all about it, so I'll probably give them my money. Who knows? But this definitely, this absorbs very quickly. My skin has already absorbed it. I can, I feel like I'm just rubbing a dry face now. Not, like, dry, but bad, but dry, moisturized, but not wet. I do feel a little too sticky, like, see how my face sticks to my hands? So I'm going to let this absorb for a little bit longer before I go into anything else in the box. Um, I can't say for sure if it's fantastic, because this kind of thing is something that you notice over time. But I can say that it does feel really hydrating. And I can also say that uh, I don't know if you guys notice that, but sometimes some face moisturizers or face creams, you apply it to your face and it feels great, but whatever's left on your hands feels like a gross residue. I don't feel that. Like, whatever is in this, my hands absorbed no problem, and they feel soft and hydrated. It's not sticky or anything like that, which is fantastic, because I have a few creams and serums that definitely leave a different kind of feel on my hands than they do on my face. Uh, like I said, I'm going to let this absorb for a little bit longer before I do anything else. So be right back. Pew. 
Okay, so it's actually the next day. I let all that stuff dry on my face, and then I went and put my foundation on, did eyeshadow, and I just did not like the way it came out, so I decided to give it a break and start it over today. And I have been fighting the sun, as always. I thought this room had, like, the best lighting for shooting videos, but one freaking cloud like after another will pass by in front of the sun so it's like beautifully bright then dark beautifully bright then dark beautifully bright then dark so i had to put up one curtain like just one sun blocking curtain and that seemed to have taken care of it or at least most of the problem her the next thing in the box is actually the dominate cosmetic celestial thunder eyeshadow palette this has eight shades and is 35 dollars um, after using it last night, I can honestly say I wouldn't pay $35 for this palette. I don't actually think I like the quality of the eyeshadows themselves. Like, I have definitely for sure used better. Um, and I feel like that might have been why I didn't like the look I came up with. Or at least that was one of the reasons. The other reason is that I don't feel this is a palette that can be used on its own. I tried to just use colors from here, and they didn't, it's almost like they didn't blend well into each other. Also, like, a lot of them don't really go together. So, I'm going to try again, and this time I'm going to use different eyeshadows from other palettes. And I think that'll give me a better idea as to whether or not these eyeshadows are actually bad, or if they just didn't match well with each other. So let's get into it. I'm just using some neutrals here from the Ultimate Basics palette from Urban Decay just to set down my eyeshadow primer and to kind of set up a base for my eyeshadow look. As you can see, the sun comes out brighter and comes out darker, hoping it doesn't affect the lighting of my face as much. Maybe next time I'll have to go with full curtains. Now I'm going into Zero Gravity from the Celestial Thunder Palette. And I'm using this small angled brush by Ips... Oh, I'm sorry, not Ipsy. Uh, Luxie. Just to get it into the corners and a little higher up into the crease. Not all the way through, but about halfway. It actually takes a little bit of time to build up this color to the opacity that I want. I wish it was a little bit more pigmented so I didn't have to work on it so hard. And now I'm just using a rounded brush uh, to buff out the crease. It's from the same collection as the last one, which is why it looks the same. What I'm really trying to do here is get him to be even up to my eyebrow to a certain point. I'm taking Eternal Light from the Thunder Palette and I'm using that with a flat shader brush on my eyelid. Honestly, I didn't see a lot of color payoff, but the glitter did stay. I was looking for, because it's a very light champagne color and I was looking for more of that champagne to transfer on there. Instead, it looked a little bit white. Now I'm going into Fireball, which is a sort of pinky orange color. And I'm just adding that into the crease a bit. I 
I'm using the same angled shader brush I was from the Luxie collection. I've always find that those small angled brushes help me get into the corners of my eye and into my crease at the same time. Here I'm trying to put more eternal light. Hopefully it like will be more noticeable. And finally, I am just adding my brow bone highlight from the Dream Street palette. All right, so this is definitely a much lighter look than what I did yesterday. All right, so I think for the most part that covers this eyeshadow. I think my issue is that there's never really any good colors to support like this blue. Maybe I could have done something with the three of these, but I always have like a harder time connecting this color, like these types of colors to these other like bright oranges and pinks, which is why I end up with like a pink look almost every single time I get a boxy charm. There's always enough pinks and it's like, get me a palette that has greens that go with each other or like blues that go with each other there's always like here's some neutrals and you want to pop a color how about pink I'm like come on guys there are other colors um i could have like i don't really think that that looked that bad i guess i should say the eyeshadows aren't bad they're like medium quality and I think that's what really bothers me. They're definitely like a medium quality eyeshadow that you could pick up at Walmart. And for $35, like, like if I had paid $35 for this, I'd be super mad. And I, I would be returning it is definitely what I'm saying. And since it's a boxy charm thing, I can't return it. But I can give it away, which I will do. I'm just going to hand it off to somebody who wants it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and finish up my eyes and then go to the next thing. So we're moving on and now we're looking at the Milk Makeup Holographic Stick. This goes for $28 and I will tell you right now, I wish it was narrower. This is like a very big circle and I, I know this is the container, but it's not much smaller than that. Well. I swear I can never record anything without dropping like a hundred things. The things you guys don't see me drop. Just imagine. Anyway, so this says it's a highlight stick and I believe it because when I used it last night, like it's not very pink. Like you look at it and you're like, oh, that's definitely a blush, but you apply it and the color just kind of disappears. For sure there is definitely a holographic not holographic, but there's definitely like a, a very intense reflectiveness to it. You can see it right there. So as applying it to my face, I'm just going to use it as a highlight. It's hard to do that because it's like I said, it's so big and highlight is such like a narrow space that you put it on. I don't know. You don't want to apply too much, obviously. So you're just kind of like, oh. Uh, I don't even know what side of my sponge to use. I used it like for my foundation, so I don't want it to... I guess I'll use a brush, something synthetic. Yeah. This is actually a foundation brush from ColourPop, but I feel like their bristles are really good for working with this kind of cream product thing. And actually, this reminds me of the ColourPop highlight sticks, which I like better. Okay, this is cute though. Like it's definitely a nice highlight. I applied it and you can tell it's there. So that works nicely. But I don't know if it's definitely my thing. Like there's no reason for it to be the size of a deodorant. I can definitely see myself using this for like a wedding or something. Um, my sister's supposed to be getting married this year, so maybe I'll do it for that. Like that look has to be crazy because she's going to do a Halloween wedding. Yeah, so I feel like this is going to be nice for that. All right, 
let's move on. All right, let's do this. Last thing in the box. I'm really surprised I've made it this far. This is the Dose of Colors Liquid Matte Lipstick. This goes for $18. Um, last night when I was filming this, I was such a fool. I didn't notice this red stripe. So it was like, oh, I don't know what color it is. <laughs> um, I'm going to go by this stripe. I think it's red. Maybe. Who knows? So when I first applied this, um, I realized I don't think I like the Dose of Colors brush. And let me correct myself because I always say I don't think. And it's like me trying to be polite, I guess. And I need to stop doing that. I don't like the Dose of Colors brush. Their formula on lipstick is amazing. I love that. And the color of this is my favorite kind of red. But the brush has these little hairs, like normally the applicators have like a little fuzzy tip, but these are too long. So when you're trying to line out, the, you know, lay the lipstick down to the edge of your lip, one little freaking hair will mess up your perfect line. And then you try to fix it, and then another hair will come out and mess up your line. So you just basically end up with your lips out to here. And it's like, listen, that's eyeliner's job, not lipstick's job. Uh, and I even put on a lip liner and everything, and I just kept spreading out. So I'm going to try again with my Ipsy. This is their liquid lip brush. This is the 160 lip. So I'm going to try to apply it with this after I apply my lip liner. This is London Fog by ColourPop. And the only reason I don't have the liquid lipstick of this color is because it's the satin lip. And I don't feel that those dry down enough like the mattes do. So hopefully, if this is a good color, I finally have my perfect red combo, which can't wait. All right. Okay. So I have my lip liner on. and I'm going to go for it. This is like this little brush here because I guess they assume you're going to toss this in your bag. So that it has like a nice little cap. And then it does this thing. But to be honest, I prefer it this short. I feel like I have more control over it this way. I really like the Dose of Colors tube. I have been wanting a Dose of Colors lipstick forever. So I'm really excited that, you know, this came in the box. I just can never bring myself to spend $18 on a lipstick. Okay. So let's get some delicious red color on there. And obviously I should be faster than this, but I'm not. I already love this color and I only have it on half of my upper lip and it's just gorgeous. I never notice how long it takes me to put on lipstick until I have to sit here and watch myself as I edit this video. And all I can think is, woman, hurry up. Now the good news is the lipstick did apply beautifully. It was super smooth and it didn't dry quickly on the brush, which I was impressed with. Some mattes tend to dry rather quickly when you put it on a different applicator than the one it came with. So I was really happy with that. A little bit goes a long way. I hadn't realized, but a little bit goes a long way with this product. It's, it's so beautiful. It always looks like one point of my lip is more pointy than rounded than the other side. And that is actually my natural lip. And I always try to make it less so, but I don't really do a good job, so. Try not to. Hmm. Hmm. This brush is much better at control and application than the applicator that comes in this tube, but this lipstick is so beautiful, oh my gosh. And see, this is the thing. I wanted to try the lipstick before I went and spent $18 on a lipstick. So I, I'm i not going to say I won't ever buy another one uh, of these. I might actually, like, if I see a color that I have to have, I think I'm going to get it. Because I like the way this feels. And I love the color. 
Let's see how it transfers, or if it transfers. Hmm. If I press firmly, yeah, then I get that. But just that, like, light one, that light kiss, that's, that's not a lot. And even so, like, it still looks good. Oh, my God, I love it. I'm so happy. <clears throat> so that was everything in this month's box. It averaged out to about 180, 190. I don't really remember the exact number. But, um, I think compared to last month's box, man, how sad is it? I can't even remember last month's box. I had way so, like, way too much stuff going on to even remember what came in there and if I liked it. Uh, but for this month, definitely the lipstick for sure, 100% my favorite. I actually, I think I've come around on the highlighter stick. I really do like it. I wish it was narrower, but I do like it. The masks and um, that serum, I'm excited to use the serum daily to see like overall the way it works, but my face felt amazing after I used it. And the mask was fun too. I'm going to save that for, uh, I guess, like a, either a really big event or like a me self-care kind of thing. Otherwise, that's it. That's all I have for you guys today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.